A one-week-old girl is brought to the clinic by her mother, who is concerned about her baby's appearance. The baby girl was born to a primogravid 27-year-old female after 39 weeks gestation. Both the patient and her daughter have B-negative blood type. APGAR scores were 9 at 1 and 5 minutes, with exam findings unremarkable aside for acrocyanosis. The patient's mother says the baby's skin has gradually become more yellow in color, but she has not noticed a change in her daughter's behavior. The baby has been feeding every 2-3 to three hours for 20-30 to 30 minutes at a time and has 6-7 to seven wet diapers a day. On examination, the patient appears well. There is jaundice of the face and upper extremities. Which of the following describes the most likely mechanism for this patient's presentation? Is it A? Increased hepatic UDP glucuronosyl transferase, B, overgrowth of intestinal flora, C, decreased levels of meconial beta-glucuronidase, D, increased clearance of meconium, or is it answer choice E, decreased erythrocyte longevity? The correct answer is E. Decreased erythrocyte longevity. Fetal erythrocytes have a decreased lifespan relative to their adult counterparts, surviving only 60 to 90 days. Increased extravascular hemolysis results in higher liberated heme molecules in the body, which are converted to bilirubin by macrophages. Higher bilirubin levels are thought to play a protective role in the newborn, theorized to scavenge free radicals. Hyperbilirubinemia is considered pathological when there is an increase of greater than 5 mg per deciliter per day, serum levels reaching 17 mg per deciliter, or if jaundice occurs within the first 24 hours of life. Phototherapy and, in extreme circumstances, exchange transfusion may be utilized to prevent permanent damage, for example, cornicterus. Neonates typically have decreased, not increased, hepatic expression of UDP glucuronosyl transferase, the enzyme responsible for converting indirect bilirubin to the more polar direct bilirubin, facilitating its excretion. Without this step of metabolism, bilirubin remains elevated in the bloodstream, contributing to neonatal jaundice. Meconium has elevated levels of beta-glucuronidase, which converts direct to indirect bilirubin, which is less polar and more difficult to excrete. Additionally, meconium clearance is slow in the first few days of life due to decreased feeding. Intestinal bacteria metabolize bilirubin to stercobilinogen, which is not absorbed as easily by the digestive tract. Because the neonatal intestinal tract is not fully colonized, there is a decreased rate of stercobilinogen synthesis and more bilirubin is absorbed back into the circulation. Next question. A four-year-old male patient presents to the emergency department for severe left knee pain. No erythema or warmth is apparent, but the patient refuses to bear weight on or move the affected joint. Hemarthrosis of the left knee is discovered on x-ray. The patient is currently taking no medications and reports no significant trauma. Which of the following is the most likely underlying cause of the patient's predisposition to this type of injury? Is it A, factor 8 deficiency, B, factor 9 deficiency, C, immune thrombocytopenia, D, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, or is it answer choice E, von Willebrand's disease? The correct answer is A, factor VIII deficiency. This is a classic presentation of the hemophiliac patient. The patient is young. Hemophilias are typically diagnosed early in life, especially hemophilia A, diagnosed usually at around 36 months. The patient is male. Hemophilias A and B are inherited in an X-linked recessive manner. And the patient presents with hemarthrosis of the knee, a classic example of a deep bleed that characterizes clotting factor disorders such as hemophilia. Hemophilia A is defined as factor VIII deficiency and is by far the most common hemophilia, 
making answer choice A correct. Factor 9 deficiency, which is hemophilia B, and factor 11 deficiency, hemophilia C, are far less common. Immune thrombocytopenia, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, and von Willebrand disease are platelet disorders and are characterized by superficial bleeds such as petechiae, purpura, epistaxis, mucous membrane bleeds, etc., making these answer choices incorrect. And the board's insider tip for this one is, this question paints a clear picture of a bleeding disorder, specifically a clotting factor deficiency, such as hemophilia. After recognizing this clinical situation, the knowledge required to answer the question is the knowledge of which clotting factor deficiency, 8, 9, or 11, matches which hemophilia, A, B, or C, respectively, as well as the knowledge that hemophilia A is the most common of the hemophilias. Remember, A comes before B and C, 8 comes before 9 and 11. Next question. As part of your first year genetics course, you learn about common genetic mutations that can cause cancer. Against the advice of your genetics professor, you take a direct-to-consumer genetic test, which reveals you have a mutation in the HER2 gene. Breast cancer is often caused by a mutation in the HER2 receptor signaling mechanism. This is an example of what kind of signaling pathway. Is it A, Jack Stat? B, TGF beta SMAD, C, adenylyl cyclase CAMP protein kinase A, D, guanylyl cyclase CGMP protein kinase G, or is it E, RTK RAS MAP K? And the correct answer is E, RTK, RAS, MAP, K. There are many signaling mechanisms throughout human physiology. Some of these are implicated in disease processes when genetic mutations occur. The HER2 gene is in part of the human epidermal growth factor family, and it codes for a receptor, which is a RAS tyrosine kinase transmembrane protein. The RTK signal, when activated, phosphorylates the RAS protein, which sets off a signaling cascade that also operates through the MAP kinase protein. The end result is increased transcription of genes involved in cell cycle progression and cell proliferation. A common mutation of the HER2 gene is the HER2 new mutation, which creates a constitutively activated protein. The result is unopposed cell proliferation and differentiation, a hallmark of cancer. This mutation is commonly found in certain types of breast cancer. Cancers of this type can often be successfully treated with the monoclonal protein trastuzumab. Other signaling pathways include JAK STAT for cell apoptosis, TGF beta SMAD in the immune system, adenylyl cyclase CAMP protein kinase A in cellular metabolism, and guanylyl cyclase CGMP protein kinase G in smooth muscle and vasculature. None of these are involved in the HER2 receptor pathway. Next question. A 40-year-old woman with low TSH and high T4 complains of anxiety and feelings of a quick heart. What pharmacotherapy can be used to decrease peripheral conversion of T4 to T3 while also decreasing sympathetic actions on the heart? Is it A, iodide, B, methimazole, C, propranolol, or is it D, prazosin? The correct answer is C, propranolol. The mechanism of beta blockers in treatment of thyroid storm is twofold. First, beta blockers such as propranolol decrease peripheral conversion of T4 to T3 by inhibiting the enzyme iodothyronine deiodinase. Second, beta blockers decrease beta adrenergic receptor action, leading to a decrease in sympathetic outflow. This decrease in sympathetic outflow should relieve the woman of her high heart rate and anxiety. 
Answer choice A, iodide, blocks the sodium iodide symporter and blocks secretion of T3 or T4 from the follicular cell. Answer choice B, methimazole, inhibits thyroid peroxidase, which causes a decrease in the coupling of MIT and DIT. And prazosin, answer choice D, is an alpha blocker, which has no use in this setting. Prazosin is commonly used to treat high blood pressure or PTSD nightmares. Next question. A medical student is caring for a neonate with sepsis secondary to E. coli. On exam, the patient is jaundiced with hepatomegaly. A review of the patient's chart reveals that this patient's mother gave birth to him at home and that this patient has previously been hospitalized for failure to thrive. The medical student suspects that a metabolic disorder may be causing the patient's clinical presentation. Which enzyme is most likely to be deficient? Is it A, galactose-1-phosphate-uridyltransferase, B, aldose reductase, C, galactokinase, D, sorbitol dehydrogenase, or is it E? Lactase. The correct answer is A, galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. This clinical presentation consisting of jaundice, hepatomegaly, E. coli sepsis, and failure to thrive is consistent with galactosemia, which is a disorder of galactose metabolism due to galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. This disorder is caused by an accumulation of galactitol when the infant begins feeding due to the lactose present in breast milk in many formulas, which causes the aforementioned signs and symptoms, in addition to infantile cataracts and intellectual disability. Treatment is to avoid galactose and lactose in the patient's diet. Next question. A 35-year-old patient presents with flushing, diarrhea, abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. 24-hour urine analysis shows increased levels of 5-hydroxyindolacetic acid. Based on these findings, which vitamin deficiency would you suspect the patient to be experiencing? Is it A, vitamin D, B, niacin, C, Thiamine, D, vitamin A, or E, folate. The correct answer choice is B, niacin. One of the major complications of carcinoid syndrome, besides those found in this question stem, is a pellagra-like syndrome due to diversion of tryptophan from the synthesis of B3 or niacin. Carcinoid syndrome seen in this patient is due to the excess production of serotonin from tryptophan. Next question. A 32-year-old male presents to his physician with new onset back pain and dark urine. He reports a recent bacterial infection for which he was prescribed sulfadiazine. Peripheral blood smear reveals red blood cells with Heinz bodies as well as bite cells. Assuming that his wife is not a carrier, which are the chances that he and his wife conceive a son who has the same disease? Is it A, 0%, B, 25%, C, 50%, D, 75%, or is it E, 100%? The correct answer is A, 0%. This man has G6PD deficiency. This causes decreased levels of reduced glutathione, making RBCs more susceptible to oxidative stress, which includes sulfa drugs and infections, as well as fava beans and anti-malarial medications. It presents with back pain and hemoglobinuria days after the exposure leading to oxidative stress. Peripheral blood smear contains RBCs with Heinz bodies and bite cells. It is X-linked recessive. Since the disease is X-linked recessive, there is a 0% chance that the father was, would pass the disease on to his sons. Sons would get their X chromosome from their mother and their Y chromosome from their father. Next question. 
A 26-year-old male presents to his primary care physician complaining of recent onset fatigue, weakness, and tingling in his feet. Review of systems is negative for weight loss, hemoptysis, and hematemesis, bloody stool, or recent illness. He denies any history of gastrointestinal disease, autoimmune disease, neurological disease, or trauma. He does not drink alcohol or use recreational drugs, but does report that he follows a strict vegan diet, which he began about six years ago. Physical exam reveals glossitis and decreased fibrous hoary sense in his feet. A peripheral blood smear is notable for macrocytic red blood cells and hypersegmented neutrophils. What other laboratory finding will be present? Is it A, increased methylmalonic acid, B, decreased homocysteine, C, decreased tetrahydrofolate, D, increased methionine, or is it answer choice E, increased succinyl-CoA? The correct answer is A, increased methylmalonic acid. This patient has a vitamin B12 deficiency. The biggest hint toward the diagnosis comes from the fact that he is a strict vegan and because vitamin B12 is found in animal products, strict vegans who do not take B12 supplements can develop a deficiency. Another clue is that he started his vegan diet six years ago. Since the liver has large stores of B12, it takes years for a B12 deficiency to develop. The challenge in this question was to distinguish a B12 deficiency from a folate deficiency. The presenting symptoms of fatigue and weakness, plus the physical exam finding of glossitis and the peripheral blood smear findings of macrocytic RBCs and hypersegmented neutrophils, are consistent with both folate and B12 deficiencies. The determining factors are the peripheral neuropathy, tingling and decreased vibratory sense in the feet, since B12 is involved in myelination and deficiencies can cause peripheral neuropathy and the history of strict veganism since vegan diets are deficient in B12. Answer choice A, an increased MMA distinguishes a B12 deficiency from a folate deficiency since the homocysteine levels are elevated for both deficiencies, but MMA is high in B12 deficiency and normal in folate deficiency. This is because B12 is required for converting MMA to succinyl-CoA. With low B12, MMA accumulates. Answer choice C, decreased tetrahydrofolate, is seen in folate deficiency. Answer choice D is incorrect because in both folate and B12 deficiencies, methionine is decreased, not increased. Finally, answer choice E is incorrect because B12 is required to convert MMA to succinyl-CoA, so levels of succinyl-CoA will actually be decreased. Next question. A 36-year-old male presents to the ED with weakness, fatigue, shortness of breath, and headache. He was recently prescribed isoniazid for tuberculosis, which he contracted on a trip to India. He denies any weight changes, night sweats, or cough. Physical exam is largely unremarkable with mild general pallor. CBC reveals a hemoglobin of 10. Iron studies indicate an elevated ferritin, decreased TIBC, increased serum iron, and increased transferrin saturation. What is apparent in the bone marrow? Is it A, macroovalocytes, B, basophilic stippling, C, schistocytes, D, Heinz bodies, or E? Ringed sideroblasts. The correct answer is E, ringed sideroblasts. This patient has sideroblastic anemia, secondary to isoniazid treatment. The symptoms, while nonspecific, are consistent with anemia, which is confirmed by the low hemoglobin. Additionally, the iron studies are consistent with a sideroblastic anemia. Since there is iron overload, ferritin, serum iron, and the saturation percentage are all increased. TIBC is decreased as the body down-regulates transferrin. 
Isoniazid is associated with sideroblastic anemia because isoniazid leads to a vitamin B6 deficiency, and B6 is required as a cofactor in the protoporphyrin synthesis pathway. With protoporphyrin deficiency, iron is trapped in the mitochondria, leading to the formation of ringed sideroblasts in the bone marrow. Answer choice A, macroovalocytes, is incorrect. Macroovalocytes are large oval red blood cells commonly seen in megaloblastic anemia, which is macrocytic. The anemia seen in this question is microcytic. Answer choice B, basophilic stippling, would be seen, but in the peripheral blood, not in the bone marrow, making this answer choice incorrect. Answer choice C, schistocytes, is incorrect because schistocytes are sheared red blood cells found in hemolytic anemias. Answer choice D, Heinz bodies are found in G6PD deficiency, which is a normocytic anemia, upon oxidative stress. Next question. A 19-month-old boy from Malaysia is brought to the hospital by his parents for seizures. He has a history of neuroregression since 6 months old and seizures since 12 months old. He was born full term at 37 weeks with no complications. The patient was developing normally until he was 6 months old when it was observed that the child was listless and lost the ability to move his limbs and roll over. Since then, the loss of motor skills has become progressively evident. Liver function testing is normal, and there is no sign of visceromegaly. Ophthalmic assessment confirms severe visual impairment, and fundoscopic exam reveals bilateral retinal cherry red spots. Which of the following is this boy suffering from? Is it A, loss of function mutation of the hex A gene, B, Loss of function mutation of the hex B gene. C. Sandhoff disease. D. Gaucher disease. Or E. Neiman Pick disease type A. The correct answer is A. Loss of function mutation of the hex A gene. This patient is presenting with neurological symptoms, seizures, and regression a cherry red macula, and no hepatosplenomegaly. These findings are most consistent with Tay-Sachs disease, a rare neurodegenerative disease caused by a loss of function mutation of the hex A gene.